Hi there, I'm Black Bright broadcasting out the UK. Welcome to my channel. What am I going to talk about today? I'm going to talk about an American situation. Mind you, um, there is a school in the UK that are following suit, but I'm talking about um, this school, Madison School, where Coretta Brown, who's the vice, who's the vice um, president at the schools, but vice principal. And she's gone, um, she's gone about trying to change a school. It's one of these low performing schools. And she has decided that she wants to, um, not really, I don't, I don't even know whether it's reprimand, but she's saying that parents should dress a certain way when they're taking their children to school. What parents are saying is that, look, I'm rushing, I've got these kids, I've got to take one to one school, one to another school, I ain't got time to dress up and look good to take my kids to school. Now, apparently these parents who are going to the school are wearing do-rags, you know those shiny little, um, you know those shiny scarf things, bonnets. They're wearing bonnets, they're wearing shower caps, they're wearing pyjamas, they're wearing slippers, they're wearing, and some of them are wearing like see-through tops and you can see their nipples and all those butty riders, you know, the really, really short ones, or they're wearing jeans with all the splits and you can see the thong underneath. This is how the parents are taking their kids to school. Now, what this teacher is saying is that they want to have a high standard for the school. And they feel that the way the parents are dressed is lowering that standard. And I think, OK, you can say that a lot of people will look on those parents and stereotype them and have an opinion about them. And when you think about life in general, it only takes five seconds for somebody to form an opinion, whether or not that opinion is accurate or not. Even if you go for a job, you could have all the qualifications in the world. But if you turn up for a job and all your boobs are hanging out and you've got this little short skirt on, really high heels, fishnet stockings, a big whole heap of hair all over the place, lots of makeup, they, they've already made their judgment. They're not even going to wait to see your qualifications. And I think what people have to understand is that we live in a very visual world. Whether or not you like it or not, that is the way the world is. It's very visual. It's only sometimes, you know, if you're forced to be with somebody and you get to know them and you think, oh, they're not too bad. They're quite nice. I didn't think they were like that. But in life, you don't always get that second chance to form a first opinion. You've already blown it. So what's happening now is that, you know, I can understand what that headmistress is talking about. Me personally, if I was a child and my mother was dressed that kind of way with kind of a, a bottom hanging out and see-through clothes and a whole heap of tattoos and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but I think when you're taking your children to school, you should be a role model. And I also think children, even though they don't say anything, they can feel embarrassed. I mean, when you watch a lot of these movies, even... Um, I mean, some of them are quite comedic, you know, they're quite funny, but they never want their parents to turn up in the school in a certain type of car. Now, some people could say, oh, they're, they're, they're materialistic, they are, um, you know, they're embarrassed and they shouldn't be, it's their parents. But children are very, very sensitive and also they see themselves as an extension of their parents and if their parents are dressed in a way that is inappropriate because children know they are going to feel embarrassed and they're not going to be able to tell the mum but it is going to affect them and the thing is they're saying that the school should focus on the children's grades and how it's a low um, level or you know low performing school but maybe that's the reason. Maybe it's because the parents aren't taking a little bit more pride in the way they look. They're not taking pride in the way, well, the children have to wear a uniform. But can you imagine turning up, to, taking your kid to school in pyjamas and slippers? Well, that's not all the parents. But apparently, um, I think 50... 
8% as Hispanic children go there and 48, 41% are black. I don't know, maybe, I don't know how, whether the rest are white. I don't know what the remainder are. But you've got a school where parents are dressed like that. Now, the person that they kind of featured on these videos, she had a, it wasn't one of those do-rags. It was actually a wrap that you'd probably, that looked quite cultural. But the thing is, she was wearing a nighty or one of those T-shirts that you wear to bed. And that's what she's taking her kids to the school in. And what the headmaster, what the headmistress, we call them headmistress. But I think they call them principals over there in America. She was, she said to him, look, you cannot register your child dressed like that. You can register your child, but you have to go and dress appropriately. Now, you've got people saying that, oh, it's discriminatory and she's too hoity-toity, and she must know where she comes from. But the black people I know have a sense of pride and a sense of self-respect. And to me, I cannot imagine anyone I know, and I'm, I'm not a top I'm I'm not rich, I don't come from a wealthy family, but I can't imagine anybody I know turning up at school with pyjamas on and slippers and rollers. Well, rollers, I think rollers are okay because you could be going out. You don't want to take your rollers out, really. So I think rollers might be, well, all depends. It does mean that that parent probably isn't working. It does create a lot of perceptions, the way people dress. And accord, and she actually wrote a list. These are the things that are not allowed that she has seen parents wear to the school. So now, um, the code of conduct for dressing for parents, no satin caps or hair bonnets, no shower caps. Some people have been wearing shower caps. Hair rollers. Well, hair rollers, it all depends. Are they just dropping them off and they have to go somewhere to the hair salon and... But I think these are, I think what this teacher is saying, they can't be dressed like this and come into the school. I don't even think it's so much about dropping them off and allowing the children to come in. I think these parents are actually coming into the school dressed like that. That is my understanding. Wearing pyjamas, um, they ban slippers, um, they Thongs as well. You know, they've got women wearing thongs and these little body rider shorts and the thongs are showing through it. Um, home setting wear, they call it, which I guess like, um, what do you call those onesies? We call them onesies over here. I don't know what you call them in America. Um, jeans that are all torn out with the buttocks showing, leggings that are, you know, all the way up and they haven't got a long top to cover their butts those kind of things. So these are the things, saggy pants, so she doesn't want parents to wear that. She doesn't want men, were well, the fathers, to turn up in vests. You know, those vests, just the vests themselves, especially when it's not hot and a do-rag. They don't want the women to wear little mini skirts that just come just below their crutch, shorts, butty rider, daisy dukes, whatever you want. So I think, that, but there's a lot of things that are going on here. It's not just the fact that these parents are dressed in that way. It's the fact that the school sent them a letter and didn't talk to them. What, the, what, some, what a couple of teachers are saying is that if she had said to the parents, look, you know, I'm trying to build the school up. I'm trying to put it on a better level, you know, I think the appearance of parents and children, I think the children should see the parents as role models and therefore if you dress, um, present yourself better, that might reflect in their work. Good presentation. Because sometimes, you know, people are sloppy and slipshod. You know, it sometimes it reflects in their work. I mean, I wouldn't have said anything if they were getting good grades. And then you would say, okay, the how the parents look does not influence the children. But the fact that the grades are so low and have been low for a while, maybe the shoddiness of the parents might have something to do with it. So um, what they're saying is that it went out to the media before 
the school spoke to the parents and so the parents didn't have a chance to adjust their dresses if they wanted to they didn't have a chance to dress appropriately but I've got a funny feeling if you're going to turn up to the school in a pyjama maybe I'm being opinionated you know maybe I haven't got a clue but I can't imagine somebody who is going to turn up to the school with pyjamas and slippers on is somebody you can have a um, you know a good communication with then because for me I kind of think that if you're gonna come out of your house walk all the way up the road with your pajamas on your slippers to take your kid to school just because when you go back you don't want to take off your you don't want to put on clothes and have to take them back and put on back your pajamas I, I have a funny feeling that they wouldn't it wouldn't be it wouldn't be accepted well anyway and one of them was saying oh you know um, oh, she was cussing her out anyway but my point is is that yeah it, or it could have something to do with the way she did it and maybe it would have been better if they had a school meeting but if these people are rushing it don't even look like they've got time anyway Apparently, some of them were saying, oh, you know, I've got all these kids. I've got to take them to one school. I haven't got time to be taking, um, to be taking off my do-rag. I ain't got time to be putting on clothes. I just put my pyjamas on. I just need to get my kid to school. That's the most important thing, getting my kid to school. To me, it just sounds like the school is a dumping ground. Um, you know, the, like I said, the fact that the grades are low and have been for a while, to me, that tells me that they're not caring parents. And this isn't all of them. This is some of them. But the fact is, if their grades aren't good and the parents are sloppy, what does it tell you? It'd be different if they were sloppy and then the grades of the children were good. But there again, are the teachers looking at the, at the children and looking at their parents and saying, look, I can't be bothered. They're not giving the uh, children the attention that they deserve because of their parents. And, you know, because I remember there was this um, test. I forget what the test was, but they had, they put children in one class and they told the teacher that these were high performing students and they put children in another class and they said that these children were low performing students. And, but there, there was no difference between the children in each class but the teacher who thought he had high performing students um, taught so much more vigilantly and went over and above in his teaching methods the teacher who thought they had low performing students didn't bother at all and as a result it was a self-fulfilling prophecy the children who weren't nurtured and who weren't taught properly and who was kind of cast aside they had they performed low and the ones who got the extra attention they performed high so it actually came out exactly how it was set and so when you think about in these schools and you have teachers who are looking on the parents how do we know that they aren't looking at the children and saying why should I bother Apparently that school has a turnaround of teachers, I think one every year almost. I think they said they had six teachers, turnaround teachers in five years. And what's supposed to happen is they have a turnaround teacher who's supposed to turn the school around and then they move on. So there's no consistency in the school. There's no loyalty. So that could even be a contributing factor as to why the children don't um, perform well because children need consistency and if there is no consistency what then so we don't know the reason why you know we can i can hypothesize and say yeah it's because of a b c d and e it might not be we don't know these parents even though they don't dress appropriately in the eyes of the school teacher or in the eyes of a lot of people they might be loving parents. They might be taking their kids home and sitting with them and teaching them. And goodness knows what. We don't know. But judging from the interview and listening to them talk, they sound a bit, 
they do sound a bit rough. So that's not to say that they still can't show the children love and attention, but the fact of the matter is the grades have been low for four to five years. It's been underperforming the school. So I don't know what you think. Um, I did write a few notes down. What is this? I don't know. Would you go to school? Do you think it's okay for um, parents to go to school in pyjamas and with all their boobs hanging out? And they say they've got impressionable young boys in the school. You know, these young boys, they're getting so distracted and waiting to see whose mum is coming in what clothes and could all be lusting after them for all we know. Um, oh, the statistics was 58 Hispanic, 40% African American, but they didn't say what the remaining 12% were. Yeah, that's what I was saying. If the, chair, if the parents change their dress code, will the children's um, grades improve? It is, to me, it is about having pride in yourself, pride in your work, present yourself well. My mum always said to me, um, you never know who you're going to meet. Whenever you step out, you always have to look a certain way because you don't know. And I'm sure many of you have done that. You've thought, oh, I can't be bothered, you know. Let me just put on this T-shirt. It doesn't matter if it's got a stain on it. It doesn't matter if it's got a hole in it. Oh, I can't be bothered. It doesn't matter that this, you know, I am a skirt. I'm just going jumping in the car and going around the corner. Guaranteed. You buck up on somebody and you think, oh, bloody hell. Why didn't I dress properly? You never know who you're going to meet. So, you know, I just think when you step out, especially if you're taking your kids to school, even if it's a pair of jeans that you put on every day, just slip them on. And a, and a shirt, how, how long does it take to put that on? You know what I mean? Put your foot in a pair of trainers. They're not saying you can't wear trainers, but these ones, are, apparently they're wearing flip-flops, they're wearing butty riders, they're wearing ripped-up clothes, see-through blouses, do rags, shower caps. I'm just like... Yeah, so I do think it's got something to do with um, pride. And, you know, the media are having a heyday. That's one thing I don't like about it. Because, you know, it could have been kept under wraps. She could have said, you know, I'm dealing with my black community. I don't really want to shame them or embarrass them. I'm going to try and get them together and talk to them and see how um, we can try to set an example. They might have some ideas. We have some ideas. We can work with it together. You know, she could have done it that way instead of having it leaked out somehow. I don't know how it leaked out. The media come in, taking photographs of the parents, having their faces or their clothes sprawled on newspapers and feeling embarrassed because a lot of people, if they think somebody is watching them or if they think there's... Um, I'm sure they would dress differently. And I'm sure if they knew that this was a new code of conduct, I'm sure they might not, like some of them say, I can't afford to dress up. You don't have to dress up. You know, Target in America, you can get outfits for like $20. You don't have to dress up in the latest thing. I know in the UK we have Primark and you can get a pair of nice black trousers for five pounds. And a top for another fiver. You know, and you can put on the black pants, buy two tops and you'd swap and you rinse it out at night or whatever if you ain't got enough. And you could put that on and look decent. So it's not about money. Nobody's telling you to look like a glamour queen or a fashion princess. All they're saying is that look presentable. You, your children, you're walking your children to school. They want to look on their parents and feel proud. And, you know, unless you're raising them to, you know, with the entertainment industry and, you know, that's that's their role models. They're looking at all these people that dress like that. Then, you know, they will feel embarrassed when they see their parents not dressing um, appropriately. These are mothers. You know, 
I remember with my mum, she, she, well, she was quite old fashioned, you know, like a long dress and everything. And I remember when she used to dress me to go to school and I had this long bloody grey skirt right up to my shin. I hated it because all the other girls, they had like a mini, not a, well, it wasn't a mini, it was just to the knee and it had one pleat and nice, you know, nice skirts. And I had this bloody long skirt and I would roll it up and wear my little grey ch- um, jumper and let it go over just so I, I looked, you know, like the rest of the, like the, rest of the kids. Now, if all the parents look the same, then that's not such a big deal. But if there's the majority of them look half decent and then your mum looks like that, the kids are going to feel a way about it. That's what I think. Anyway, let me sure, I'll make sure I've covered everything. Um, schools have had dress codes for years and teachers have, have been the ones to make sure that the uniform rules are followed, whether it is a tie that needs to be longer, a shirt that needs to be tucked in, or a skirt that is too short. Most students have been on the end of telling off. And um, I remember at my school when I was young, I was only about 10, and the school code was that you had to have a handkerchief, a white handkerchief. And I had forgotten mine and I lied. I went to the toilet and I came back and I realised I didn't have it in my jacket. And I told my teacher that I'd lost it or something or I couldn't find it. One, the ruler right across my knuckles, detention, standing with my, my back to the classroom. That was, you know, the rest of my uniform I had, you know, one handkerchief. That was my punishment. So, um, yeah, James Madison High School in Houston have introduced a dress code for parents who drop their children off at the gates in the morning. Oh, so it's just at the gates they're talking about, not even in the school. They will turn away any parents who arrive in pyjamas, hair rollers, leggings and many other forms of clothing that have been deemed unsuitable. Parents are deeming it discriminatory and classist. So, um, yeah, Carlotta Outley Brown, principal of the school, said in a letter out, sent out to parents, parents, do we, we do value you as partners in your child's education. Tamika Miller, a mother of a child at Madison High School, claimed that the letter was discriminatory and demeaning stating that an African-American woman, she wears a hair bonnet when it's misty outside. So apparently she's saying she wears a hair bonnet when it's misty outside because she wants to protect her hair. So, I don't know. President of the Houston Federation of Teachers, Zeph Kapow, also criticised the letter saying that codes relating to women's hair were classist and belittling. I'm sorry this principal may have plenty of money and time to go to the hairdresser weekly and have her stuff done, he said. Who are you to judge others who may not have the same opportunities that you do? But the thing is, that's got nothing to do with opportunities. Dressing yourself in a presentable way doesn't have to cost money. That's what I don't get. They're making it look like they're asking them to wear some kind of uh, an expensive piece of clothes. All she's telling them to do is don't wear your bloody bedwear, your pyjamas and stuff, to bring your kids to school. Personally, I don't see anything wrong with it. I see something may be wrong in the way she handled it. Like I said, she should have brought them in, had a little talk, and then if they ignored her, then she could have sent out a letter. But... I think, you know, the way you dress on the street, whether you're taking your kids to the school. I mean, sometimes when I'm putting my bin out, I even put a little cap on, you know, like those little baseball caps and I and I put on, you know, my coat. But even then, I'm very, very conscious that there might be somebody out there who can see me and that's to take my bin out. So I, I guess everybody's different, you know what I mean? Can we argue that the way parents are dressed affects schoolwork? How are children of these parents performing in school? Like I said, they're not performing very well. Should the teachers be focusing on children and not the parents? Are teachers judging the children based on their parents' appearance? 
Are they teaching them at a lower standard because of their parents' appearance? So, so that's what I mentioned before. Um, you know, she says your parents are your first teachers, and that's true. You know, children, when you're t talking to your, ch your child, the way you look, the way you present yourself, your child is looking and learning from you. So you always have to kind of make sure that you present yourself in a way you want your child to grow up. Even if you behave like a little hooligan with your friends, in front of your children, try, try to adopt a certain mannerism that commands respect and you have a sense of pride. I just think to myself, these people don't have no pride. That's the way I look at it. Apparently, um, Frederick Douglass, it's easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. So, you know, it's important that how you raise your child from their young, because once they're broken as adults, there's nothing you can do. You can't go back. So it's very important to lay that foundation. So um, what does certain attire say about parents? Here is the perception in North American context, wearing curlers to school. Mummy does not have a job. Mummy is on welfare. Mummy will only uncurl her hair in order to go to the club. Mummy doesn't want a job. Mummy isn't looking for a job. If the lawmakers didn't make it illegal for one not to send their child to school, that child would not attend classes. See through blouse where breasts can be seen. Mummy came home from the strip club this morning and did not change. Wearing an undershirt referred to as they're referred to as wife beaters with the do-rags. Daddy has to meet his parole officer after he drops the child off school. By dressing in club attire, this mis these miscreants haven't the faintest idea that they are sending their children on a path to downward social mobility. This is what one of my um, subscribers wrote and told, said to me. Um, let me see... No one's saying to put on a fashion show. Just look as if you want your kids to succeed. Good parenting is about sacrificing for your children, doing without to ensure your children have lunch money, representing your child well, so he or she feels proud of you. It's similar to partners, you know, when you have your partner, you know, they re we represent each other. If I go out with my partner, he represents me, so I want him to look good and I want him to... Um, interact well in the same way if he if he's going out with me and he sees me out there you know he's he's taking me somewhere he wants me to represent him well he's not going to want me to go effing and blinding and wear these low-cut blouses all my breasts out a door and a little short dress showing heart nearly showing my crutch no we represent each other we represent our children our children represent us especially in their behavior Sometimes my grandson, he'll always say, oh, thank you so much, Nan Nan. When I take them out for a meal, took them out for a meal the other day. Thank you so much, Nan Nan. You know what I mean? That shows that my daughter has raised him with manners. He represents her. And she represents me. And the way he dresses to go to school represents the family. I don't think people get it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's got nothing to do with black people. It's almost like they're saying that's how black people dress and that you're discriminating against them because they dress with do rags. That's what it's like. That's what they're saying. It's discriminatory because we can't afford to dress certain wear. Do rags and pyjamas on the street. I'm sure they've never seen their parents dress like that. That's got nothing to do with blackness. That's got nothing to do with black people. That's to do with your state of mind and the fact that you don't give a toss about how you look, how you represent yourself and how you represent your children. Representing your child well so she or he feels proud of you. A parent who does that extra job and makes sure that their child can afford decent shoes or even go to the movies. A smart parent who everybody sees walking their child to school 
commands respect. A parent who gives boundaries means that that child will be obedient and knows limitations. And I mean, that's even with the dress sense. If you wear a skirt and a blouse, that child is going to know, OK, when I go to school, this is how I dress. What you're teaching your child by dressing in pyjamas, you're telling your child, basically, it's OK to, cut, cut, to come out on the street like that. What, what, are you, what are you teaching your child when that child leaves school? If you're the only role model she or he has, what are you telling that child when you go on the street like that? And when he goes, when he goes and applies for jobs later on, you're going to tell that, you're to, what you're indirectly telling that child is, it doesn't really matter how you dress. And a lot of people really believe that. They believe it doesn't matter what you dress. I, I've got a degree in this. I've studied this. I've got this. It doesn't really matter what I look like. It will matter what you look like when you don't even get through the door. And then you're going to say, oh, it's because I'm black. It's got nothing to do with that. It's about representing yourself well and appropriately. There's a time and a place. You know, you can wear those things if you're going to your mate's house, maybe, and she dresses like that. That's fine. And she lives next door. But you don't walk down the street, maybe half a mile or goodness knows how long, how far you have to walk. Or even jumping out of your car. It doesn't really matter. Jumping out of your car in pyjamas and slippers to take your child to school. How does that look? But some people say they don't care about how it looks. Don't worry about what people say. Don't worry about what, you know, don't worry about me. Get on with your own life. That's the attitude. Now, how can you relate to people like that? How can you make people like that understand that, you know, we're trying to build a better future for our children. And they, these people know that the world is so superficial and it is the world is very superficial. Most people, even in the dating scene, you, it's, it's visual. You look on somebody and think, wow, look good. Look at somebody and, you know, you go to some of these clubs and you see somebody with some T-shirt and trainers and tracksuit. You don't care what they have. They could, they could be full of degrees. They could have a beautiful house. But you look at them and you're like, bloody hell, didn't he, couldn't he make an effort? And that's what this is about, making an effort. So it's no point saying, you know, it doesn't matter. It does. And if you even check yourself and you check how you judge people, you're going to say, I bet you're the type that if you're in a club, all these women, they're in a club and they see somebody that don't look too good, they're going to be laughing or, you know, mocking that person or, you know, just in them or whatever. A parent who cares about their child's academic performance as opposed to a parent who does not care. And that's what it's about. You need to show you care, parents. It's hard, you know. It's so easy to just jump out of your bed, say, look, I've just got to get the kids to school. That is so easy. Come on, kids. You know, let me get you to school. I can't be bothered to change. Drop you off. Jump back in your car. Go back home, jump back in the bed and turn on the TV. It's so easy not to make an effort. But making an effort is important. Everybody needs to make an effort. Because once you make an effort with small things, you'll make an effort with big things. And I'm not telling you all off, guys. I'm just saying, just try to look at it from your child's point of view and what you're teaching your child about presentation. Okay? And that's all. Bye-bye.